in this video, we are going to be going into the use state hook. This is the second video in my React hook series. So if you didn't catch the one last week, make sure you check that out first. So let's jump in and start learning right now. So before we jump into the code, let's do a quick refresher on props versus state. In React, we use both props and state to represent rendered values or what's currently shown on the screen. Props are read only and are passed into a component. State is initialized inside a component and can be updated using either set state in a class component or use state in a functional component. This video will be obviously about use state, so we're going to focus on that in this video. So let's jump into the code. I've prepared a little code sandbox here with a stateless functional component. And all it is right now is a button that is set to on. As you can see here, we have the class on. And we're going to use the use state hook to actually add some functionality or some state to this button. So the first thing we're going to need to actually add state to it is the use state hook. The use state hook is a function and we call it with the initial value that we want for our state. So in this case we would like the button to be off by default so we will call it false and then it returns an array of two values. The first value is the state or the value. So we'll call it a button active. And then the, lucky enough, the second value is actually a way to update that state. So we can call that set button active. So the reason it's an array is because if this was an object, we would destructure it and we'd already be given names. But because it's an array, we can call it which whatever we like. And that makes it very flexible um, and a lot more readable when we start using these things in our code. So to start using the state, let's get the button to toggle on and off. So let's get it to go off first, which it should be by the initial state here by adding in a conditional or a ternary to actually tell us if the button should be on or not. So we're going to append this class depending on if the button is active, then we will want it to be on. And if it's not, we will say don't. So as you can see now, the class on it actually looks like it's off, but the text on it is still wrong. So let's add the text to be dynamic too, based on the state. So let's give this the same really statement as here, except we're going to change button on to be on and off. Excellent. So just to show you the initial state here working, if I change this to true now, it will be initialized to on. So to update this value, we need to use this set button active. I'm going to first put this back to false. So we have the correct default and we're going to update this in an on click. So in the on click, we are going to say set button active or actually sorry we're going to pass this a function to call it and we're going to pass this to true 
Okay, so now when we click the div, we should see the button turn on. Perfect. Now, if we rely on previous state, so say if we wanted to say we want it to be the opposite of now and we want to rely on the previous state of the uh, button, we would have to pass this a callback function which returns the value. And the first uh, piece that will be passed to this is the button active. And we can actually then say not button active. The thing you have to just remember is you always have to return a value when you do these things. So now we have just added on and off functionality. Not too bad since our code has only expanded one line of code here. I guess if we add in the on click or spread it out a little bit, it looks a little bit uh, more complex. But, you know, I think that's pretty simple and straightforward to read. So the next thing we're going to look at is having multiple states. So for the multiple states, we are going to actually add two buttons onto the screen now and see that we can actually have more than one state. So we're going to call this second button active. And we're obviously going to call this set second button active. So I am going to and that's going to be use state and default to false as well. Excellent. So this time we're going to pass in this and we're going to use the second button active. And that hasn't been updating. Perfect. But we also need to update this one. So you'll notice this one is updating the other one at the moment. So we want to actually update that using the set second button active. And our button active is still set to the original one, so let's also update these. Excellent. So now you can see we have two different lines of state and they don't interfere with each other. Perfect. Now, when we do things like this, it might seem a little bit pointless because um, basically, why wouldn't we, I suppose, have an array of buttons if we wanted to have, say, another eight buttons. So that's when I suppose we get into a more complex state management system. And let's just play around here and see how would we refactor this to use a single object to actually define how uh, our buttons behave. So. I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring here. And I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to pull out the button to be its own component actually for a second. And going to return and we're going to instead of this we're going to give this an on click prop and we're going to have to send those props down to it so on click and button active okay so there the that's the way it should be. So let's just double check that this is still working as expected by wiring it back up the way it was. Perfect. 
and then the on click and we should perfect okay so it's working as expected so let's pull this out So to show a more complicated use case for state, we are going to actually generate a couple of buttons with an array of objects that are going to have the state of the buttons. So for that, we're going to initiate this into an array of settings. So I just had this on my clipboard to save me typing it out. And that's is active false for the first one and is active true for the second one. And then an ID for each of them so we can identify them by the ID. So the names now no longer make sense really here. So we're just going to change these to buttons and set buttons. So we're going to just render these to the screen first so we can see the, them working. And then we'll go into updating them. So buttons.map. And we're going to return a B value for button and then the button. So we'll assign a key to get rid of that warning real fast. And that's gonna be the b.id. And then we can say the button active is equal to the b dot is active. And now we have everything the way it should be. So we can see the buttons. And now we need to add state back in. So let's add, we're going to add an on click to change this, but I'm going to pull the functionality out a little bit because it's a bit too much to do in line. So we're going to call this toggle buttons. Okay const toggle buttons and inside our toggle buttons function we're going to decide if it's a button if it's the button we've chosen so we're going to identify it by the id to toggle it so we're going to say const new buttons because we need to duplicate the buttons that we return And we're going to say B here again. And just to remember, because I often forget to actually return a value here. So we will say if the B dot ID is equal to our ID that we pass in. Then our B dot is active is going to become not B dot is active. Okay. And then we're going to call our set buttons with the new buttons. So now we need to actually put this into the code here. So I'm going to say on, we're going to add the on click. If I could spell. And we're going to pass toggle buttons with the b.id. So let's see now, does this work? Perfect. So this is. A little bit if you're used to using class components you'd be you'd be used to being able to update a piece of state at a time and this is what probably is a small drawback when you use use state um, you have to make sure that you um, return all of the values yourself so there's a, just a little extra bit of work there and making sure that you've always got it but I think when you're used to it it's a pretty simple 
thing to manage because we're used to looking after objects with JavaScript anyway. Okay, I'm just going to delete this line here now. So let's revise just a couple of the key takeaways before we look at a couple of the gotchas and the things to watch. So we call use state to uh, initialize or to add state to a function. The state, use state hook, takes an initial value, which we see passed here. It returns an array with two, pro with two values, the first one being the value that we want to pass around, and the second being a way to update the state. After the updater is called, you have to remember that it triggers a re-render. And so if you have an expensive computation and it runs through and you're re-rendering this component a lot, it's important to know that there is a way to lazy initialize these pieces. So to lazy initialize a piece of state, you just have to give it a callback and that will force it to just be run once. So this is great for, say, if you want to initialize your state using something like local storage or there's a little bit of an expensive computation before you actually jump into the code. So it's uh, important to to just be aware if you're doing anything expensive in your initial state to give it a callback. So there's only a couple of rules you have to remember when you're using use state as well. Only call hooks at the top level and only call hooks from a React function. Okay. So let me just show you what I mean by only calling it at the top level. So in here where we're calling it is the top level. But if we were saying something like if is on or some random variable in here, and then we say const state set state equals use state this would be an improper way of doing it and you're probably going to run into an error pretty fast so most of your linting tools and things will catch that i know code sandbox will catch that for me but just be aware that it has to be at the top level we don't put this inside if statements or anything else we make sure it's called at the top level so it's always initialized when your code runs and only calling hooks from react functions just make sure that when you're creating the functions that they're actually React components that are, or React functions that you're calling them back from. As you can see, this is probably a little bit of a rough way to do this. And I would recommend if you're updating arrays of objects and things like that, use Reducer is probably a better tool for it. And I will be going over that in an upcoming video. But for now or and i have done it in a lot of apps myself this is perfectly good as well if you found this video helpful don't forget to like and subscribe and i will have a new video out next week on use effect so if there's anything you would like to see me do with react hooks or if there's any questions you have please leave them in the comments below and i'll get back to you and until next week happy coding